Little Red Riding Hood Once upon a time, there was a beautiful young girl who was loved by everyone that knew her. Her grandmother also loved her very much and loved to give her gifts. One day, her grandmother sewed a beautiful red velvet riding cloak with a hood for her. The young girl liked it so much that she never went outside without it. So, after a while, people who saw her every day wearing it started to call her Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood lived with her mother and father in a small cottage in a village next to a big forest. Her father spent every day in the forest chopping wood. Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother lived a few miles away. She had a small cottage in the middle of the forest. Little Red Riding Hood loved to visit her granny and almost every day Little Red Riding Hood walked through the forest along a small path to visit her grandmother. One day, Little Red Riding Hood's mother said to her daughter, I have packed a basket with some bread and berry juice for Granny. She's feeling ill and these will help her to feel better. You could take them to her. Make sure you stay on the path and don't talk to strangers, Little Red Riding Hood's mother warned her. Also, be careful that you don't drop the basket, as the bottle might break, continued her mother. I'll be careful, Little Red Riding Hood promised as she took the basket. Little Red Riding Hood waved goodbye to her mother and set out along the forest path. Little Red Riding Hood hadn't walked far along the path when she met the wolf. She had never met or seen the wolf before and didn't know what a sly creature he was. Because he just looked like a big dog, Little Red Riding Hood wasn't scared of him at all. Good morning, Little Red Riding Hood, the wolf said. Good morning, sir, Little Red Riding Hood answered. And where are you going this early in the morning? The wolf inquired. To see Grandmother, Little Red Riding Hood said. And what do you have there in your basket? The wolf continued. Some bread and a bottle of berry juice. Little Red Riding Hood replied. Granny is ill, and my mother sent these for her to make her feel better. Where does your grandmother live, Little Red Riding Hood? The wolf asked. About a mile away, along the path, Little Red Riding Hood answered. Her house is under the three big oak trees. The wolf thought for a moment to himself. Hmm, if I am clever enough, I can eat both of them for supper. So the wolf walked beside Little Red Riding Hood for a while, talking about this and that. Look at those flowers under those trees, the wolf said. Aren't they pretty? And can you hear how beautifully the birds are singing? Why would you go straight to your grannies on such a lovely day as this? You could stay a while in the forest and pick some flowers for your granny. Little Red Riding Hood decided to take the wolf's advice. The wolf said goodbye to Little Red Riding Hood and hurried straight to Grandmother's cottage. The forest was a wonderful and fascinating place. The sun's rays danced on the leaves, colorful flowers covered the ground, and birds twittered cheerfully in the trees. I'm going to pick the prettiest bunch of flowers I can find, Little Red Riding Hood thought to herself. And so she walked deeper and deeper into the forest, picking a bunch of the most beautiful flowers that she had ever seen for her granny. By now, the wolf had arrived at Grandmother's cottage. He knocked on the door. Who 
who's there? Grandmother called out. Little Red Riding Hood, answered the wolf, disguising his voice. I have brought you some bread and a bottle of berry juice. The door is open. Come in, child, called Grandmother. I'm ill at the moment, so I won't get up to answer the door. The wolf opened the door and stepped inside. Without saying a word, he walked straight over to Grandmother's bed and swallowed her up whole. Then the wolf dressed up in Grandmother's nightgown and pulled a nightcap low over his eyes. He pulled the curtains closed and climbed into bed, pulling the blanket up to his ears. Then he waited. Meanwhile, Little Red Riding Hood had strayed far from her path. It seemed to her that the most beautiful flowers were always a little bit further away. When she had picked as many flowers as she could carry, she remembered her granny lying ill in her bed. Little Red Riding Hood found her way back to her path and continued her journey. When Little Red Riding Hood arrived at Grandmother's cottage, she was very surprised to see the door was open. Good morning, Granny, she called out as she came in through the door. There was no reply. Little Red Riding Hood wondered what was wrong. She went to stand beside Grandmother's bed and then opened the curtains. There lay her grandmother, her nightcap over her eyes and blanket pulled over her ears. She looked very strange. Oh, Granny, Little Red Riding Hood gasped. What big ears you've got. All the better to hear you with, my dear, was the reply. But Granny, what big eyes you've got, said Little Red Riding Hood. All the better to see you with, my dear, replied the wolf. Granny, what big hands you've got, said Little Red Riding Hood. All the better to hug you with, my dear, replied the wolf. Little Red Riding Hood was beginning to feel scared. Oh, Granny, what big teeth you've got, whispered Little Red Riding Hood. All the better to eat you up with, exclaimed the wolf. No sooner had the wolf said the words, then he leapt up from the bed and swallowed up Little Red Riding Hood. Then he crawled back into the bed, lay down and fell fast asleep. He snored so loudly that the whole house shook. Soon after, Little Red Riding Hood's father walked by. He heard a dreadful snoring coming from Grandmother's cottage and decided to go and see how Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother could be snoring so loudly. When he came to Grandmother's bed, he saw the wolf lying fast asleep in Grandmother's bed, snoring. You vile creature, he yelled in a rage. I've waited a long time to catch you. And with one blow of his axe, he killed the wolf and pulled it off the bed. Little Red Riding Hood's father suspected that the wolf might have eaten Grandmother whole. So Little Red Riding Hood's father cut the wolf open, hoping that he would find Grandmother still alive. Imagine his surprise when out jumped Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, how scared I was, Little Red Riding Hood cried. It was so dark there in the wolf's stomach. Then, Little Red Riding Hood's father helped Grandmother out of the wolf's stomach. She was alive, but very weak. Little Red Riding Hood and her father helped Grandmother back into bed. They gave her some bread and some berry juice, which made her feel much better again. They were all very happy. 
Little Red Riding Hood and her father walked back home hand in hand to where mother was waiting for them. I will never again stray from the path into the forest or talk to strangers when you have forbidden it, said Little Red Riding Hood to her mother, hugging her tightly. The wolf was dead and all was well. Little Red Riding Hood had learned her lesson and they all lived happily ever after.